too. Hi, this is Stacey Chalemi from The Advisor. Today, I'm so excited because we have a very special guest today. Her name is Rachel Lee, and she is a branding expert. And today, she's coming on the show to teach people the proper way of branding because less than 1% of our society that have businesses don't brand themselves properly. So, Rachel, why don't you tell people a little about yourself and what you do and show everybody the right way to brand because we need to learn. Yeah, well, thanks for having me. Um yeah, you know, let me tell you a little bit about myself. So, um, yes, I've become the branding lady boss. Um, really, I am a marketer um, and I've been a marketer my entire life because for me, it's about the people. And to me, great business and um, great marketers are those that understand people right. and create value for others and focus on relationships um, and so I worked at, I worked at a marketing agency when I started my career. Um, I'm here in Austin, Texas. I grew up in LA. Uh, I did my undergraduate actually at university of Wisconsin, Madison. So in case people are listening, I always like to say the schools that I've, um, graduated from, cause you never know, uh, <laughs> they're, you know, Midwesterners or Wisconsin people, you know, so, um, yeah. I, I was, I lived there. Then I, I was working at a marketing agency in Chicago and New York and working with big brands. So I was working on Unilever's acts and um, really understanding CPG, you know, when you think about branding at a corporate level and from a product good standpoint, that's really how I started my career and, and, and working with Unilever as my client. Um, and in that journey, I decided that I wanted to be on the corporate side mm -hmm. and got my MBA at the here in Austin at the University of Texas McComb School of Business in Austin. So that was really a big transition for me where I was able to go into the tech world and was at Microsoft um, for a few years and then Gartner. Um, so big, big companies working much more on the business to business kind of marketing, software, technology, um, and really never turn back. Yeah. You know, there's just uh, so much to learn. And let's be honest, every every company is a tech company in some way or another. And if you're not, you're behind at this right. point. Um, and, you know, in that journey, I just, again, back to how I said, you know, this is about people to me and those relationships. Um, and I knew I could share my voice more mm -hmm. and create more impact um, with, with professionals and with people across the world by going out on my own. And so two years ago, almost I left corporate to join forces with my husband, Joshua B. Lee, the dopamine dealer of LinkedIn. And together we are co-owners of standout authority and everything that we do is around building human connections online. You know, we really, believe that we are in the human revolution. Um, we have, we are witnessing the greatest change our civilization really has ever experienced. Right. Um, and we must stay at the center of, of that transformation humans. And so how do we build those human conversations, uh, bring that authenticity to market through our personal brands and, and connect with other business professionals through a platform like LinkedIn. And so that's what we focus on um, at Standout Authority. Now, you were saying to me that less than 1% of the people in our society that have businesses brand themselves properly. Can you explain a little bit more of that and explain to people the proper way of branding, like, you know, educate people on how to go about it. And maybe they can understand what they're doing wrong and really how to begin. Yeah, I mean, listen, the, the conversation around personal branding and, and really having a voice for yourself wasn't a conversation 20 years ago. No, it wasn't. You know, it just wasn't. It was, I work at a company, that is who I work for. I am the marketing manager at X, right? That's who I am. Right. And um, it was really not about sharing your voice. And it was not about, you know, um, having a presence out there because your professional and personal life were separate. Yes. Um, and, you know, it was just different 20 years ago. And then with social media, really, although there's been many things that have created, you know, this massive transformation into the digital revolution, right? It's yes. not just social media. 
the World Wide Web, right? Being in Web 2, moving into Web 3, there's a lot of things that have helped facilitate yes. a big change in the way in which we market, period. Yes. Period. You know, and now, so that's just like contextual, right? Now we're in this like social media driven world, right? Video first. Um, of course, there's a huge conversation around artificial intelligence and how we're using that. Um, and so, and, and most importantly, and the biggest thing has been this global experience of a pandemic, right? You know, that has really catapulted and accelerated people's focus on themselves, Right. You know, really having, I was part, I am part of that great resignation, you know, cause we have to coin a term for everything. Yeah. Um, you know, having that time at home alone working now, every, most of the workforce is remote. The dynamics have completely shifted and people are really thinking about, wait a minute. It's not, I work for X. I'm marketing manager of X. It's I'm Rachel B. Lee. Yeah your branding lady boss. And yes, I work for this company. And yes, I am a mother. And yes, I actually have a side hustle and I do X, Y, Z, right? Like, right. I'm, I'm multiple things. I'm not just my company. And it's really important to me to be able to bring both sides of that self to my business, to my company, whether I own it or work for somebody else. So there's been just a really big shift that in in a great way has catapulted what we do here at Standout. And our message around personal branding is the number one most important thing, whether you, if, number one, if you are the business owner or you are the solopreneur, you are the business. They're one in the same, right? Right. So you have to create a message that is you and the business, right? Because you've created that. And then even if you're working for a company, you're still yourself. You still want to present. You must stand as you are mm -hmm. without that company because you might get laid off. You might want to start a, a side hustle. You the the Your future and your career can take many paths. Yeah. And the only thing we have for sure is our personal brand. Right. Who we are. What, what is the gift and experience gift that we're bringing to the world and what is the experience people are having of us? And yes, that is online. Mm -hmm. How are you showing up online, which LinkedIn is the most important platform. If you're a business professional, right? right? The most trusted platform for business professionals. It is a place where four out of five people are decision makers I mean, this is where business is getting done, not mm -hmm. to say TikTok, Instagram and, and, and Facebook, there's not tons of opportunity or, to, or, or your audience or, you know, ability for you to be your personal brand. But when it comes to, we're on a business podcast, right? you know, LinkedIn is the most important platform that there is out there in my opinion. So, so we're just in a time, you know, Stacey, where, um, this is your time. When I say yeah. you, I say like the global you. Right. Where you get to decide what do you want to be known for? What right. legacy do you want to leave? When you walk into a room for a meeting, they're going to look you up. Yeah. So what are you saying about yourself? If you don't have a presence, what message is that sending? Exactly. You know. you know, it depends what industry you're in, but I don't know. It's kind of like when you go to those, you know, the restaurant or like that new nail salon or whatever. And you're like, you look it up. They have no reviews. You can't really find it. You're like, is this place a little sketchy? Right? Yeah, definitely. That's the same with you. When people research you, when you go on Google, what shows up? Exactly. I think, you know, one of the problems is that I think that I've come across with, with clients is that they have so many different hats. So instead of, you know, they don't realize that they need to really focus on one specific niche and make that their ultimate brand, you know, and, you know, like a tagline that kind of says it all, 
in a, in a couple of simple words, you know, some people you'll see, they'll tell their life story and people don't want to read the life story, not in an email, not on LinkedIn, not on anywhere. They just want, they want, you know, our society wants simple, brief, blunt to the point. And people have to really think about where is their income coming, don't you think? What what niche is my my major niche? And how do I give them like a tagline or how do I, I say something in a few words that's gonna say express who I am as a brand and sell them and, and get their and draw their interest to me. Yeah. Um that is a really important piece of the puzzle, right? So few things. People do want to know your story. People do want to know the background. It's where and how that is. Exactly. Told. Yes. Yes. Right. Um, and so there's like, for instance, on a LinkedIn profile, your about section is so often overlooked and never used. Mm -hmm. You have 2,600 characters to really tell people more about who you are. Right. Not just what you do. Yes. And I think that's a big mistake. Um, especially for the business owner listening right now or the person, you know, leading people don't just want to know what you do. They want to know who you are and why you do what you do, but they do need to know what do you do and who do you serve? Right. So you're right in that it is very important for you to get clear on the exact skills that you have and the services that you're providing right. and specific to who you do it best for. So when we go through building a, a personal brand, um, I ask my, my students, right. Our group, or I'm asking my client, yeah, what are your top skills? You know, what are your hard skills that you have experience in? Right. So for me, communication, marketing, right branding. And there's evidence of that. Mm -hmm. What's your differentiation? Why should people work with you? And this is where you think about what certifications do you have? What degrees do you have? Are you, how many languages do you speak? There's many things that make you different than the other person. Right. Those are really, really important when we're building our brand and standing out from a lot of people that look, look, I put that in quotes Yeah, it's because let's be honest, many people are marketers. Many people do personal branding. Many people are coaches. You, you name it. Right. You, you start to differentiate yourself by what are the skills and specific things that I offer? What is my differentiation? What is the experiences and backgrounds that a background that I have that give me a unique capability unlike somebody else? So for instance, the fact that I do have an MBA, the fact that I did work in corporate and at an agency, I've worked with big brands. These are differentiators for me. Yeah. I attract a certain kind of executive and person because they say, oh, well, she worked at Microsoft. She has her MBA, right? So I attract somebody that is different than Josh, my husband, for instance, who's 20 mm -hmm. plus year entrepreneur, total natural born entrepreneur, standout is his 16th company. Mm -hmm. And so he attracts a totally different audience and that's beautiful. So you want to know what's my differentiation? What are my skills? Who is my audience? To your point, you got to niche down and you're hundred percent right. You have to know who wants to purchase what you are selling. Right. Exactly. And Stacey, so often what I see people make a mistake with is they have an aspirational audience. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I really love to have that, you know, eight figure business owner, whatever it is, yeah, entrepreneur. And I'm like, have you worked with anybody like that? No. Do you have experience helping people um, with X, you know, whatever X, Y, Z? No. Then why are you? Why would somebody be attracted to you? You don't have the exactly. credibility. Exactly. So you really need to look at who currently is talking to you. Who are my current clients? Who are my current product users? Right. And right now with the economic shifts that are happening and a lot of tightening happening. Yes. 
The best strategy that we can use is focus on retention more than acquisition. Mm -hmm. Get, keep the people you got, keep them happy. Right. right? You know, a customer for life is going to advocate for you and pay off dividends. Yes. And to acquire new people is not just money. It's time. It's effort. Right. So when things tighten, I always think, and I don't just think this, you know, I read um, our retention efforts are really important, especially if people have experienced you, you know? Yeah. They're going to be your best source. And the reality is, is that 20% of your revenue, your income is going to come from the newbies and outside of the box. 80% of what you do is going to come from the people that know and like you, the people that love you, people who've worked for you, the people that refer you. Right. So, you know, during times like these, really think about that audience smart and strategically, because there's a lot of different sentiment going yeah. on in the market. You know, and then, and last, as you're thinking about your personal brand, I want you to think about what you're passionate about. Yeah. So, you know, for you to stand out, for you to start putting yourself out there, yes, people need to know what do you do? Mm -hmm. What is it, Stacey, that you can give to me? Right. Why should I work with you? Who are you serving? But I also want to know, like, who is Stacey? Why does she care so much about working with me? Right. You know, what is her passion? Why? And for me, when I work with somebody and they have this understanding of their voice, their positioning, they feel that confidence. Yeah. They're like, oh, like that's who I am. That's mm -hmm. how I describe myself. Yes. Oh, that's for me, that aha is what I'm passionate about. That moment of people finding their voice and getting that confidence is everything to me. It's what keeps me going, even when the times get a little bit tough, right? In business. And people feel that the person listening right now, you're going to feel that from me because I am so passionate about right. this. It's so important. Mm -hmm. And it comes through in my content. Yes. People message me all the time and they say, I love your content. It's so authentic. You really have helped me understand X, Y, Z. You've encouraged me to become an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm all of these pieces because I'm speaking from a place of passion and what matters. Right. And that is very distinct with a personal brand. Yes, it is. A business brand will never be able to communicate the passion. The way they do that is through their influencers, is through their executives, through their people. Right. Ultimately, we as humans connect on an emotional level with other people. Oh, I agree totally. And I think also the trust factor goes up when they see you talking with such compassion and such motivation, they really see that you have an honest ability, you know, your, your ability is, is, and your passion is there. So you really want to do as much as you can for that client. And they pick that up right away. It, and I think that's very important. Right. And, and you can show that passion on a phone call, but what, how are you going to get somebody on that phone call? Right. Let's say you're trying to close a client. And one of the big pain points people come to us with is my referrals are dry, drying up. I'm putting, you know, content out there. It's not getting engagement. Right. right. I can't convert. Like these are very common pain points that we hear. Yeah. And so what you need to show that, right. That passion, that commitment, that, expertise through your content. Yeah. Message you're putting out there through how we're, what do you visually look like? What does your LinkedIn profile look like? What is your Instagram, right? What all these pieces, how are you showing up on video? Because branding is very visual. Yes, it is. People are making impressions of you within seconds. Yes. Before we, we got on and it took like two seconds, right? For us to say something, you had some, an assumption, an impression of who I am. Right. Oh, the color of her shirt. Oh, what's her background? Oh, mm -hmm. she looks like her pictures. No, she doesn't. Right. Like, <laughs> but like all these things are like firing off in our head. Yes, it's true. It's because, so true. Because that's just psychologically what happens. Yes. So 
when we think about building our personal brand, how do I get visibility? How do I attract my ideal client? How do I engage them, convert them, pull them through the funnel? You, you have to think about what's that message and visual and perception yeah. that you're putting out there. Is it the perception you want people to have of you? Is it accurate? Right. And creating the results that you want and desire. I think, you know, one of the problems I hear from people is that, especially on social media, when they're trying to advertise themselves on social media by putting out content, they don't really know who their audience is. They think they know who their audience is, but it's really a totally different person. And that's why they're not getting engagement. That's why they're not getting conversions because they don't have the right audience. And how does the person find out who their true audience is? How do they know, you know, what do they do? You're a hundred percent correct, Stacey. I think here, here's the bit of comfort. Having your target audience, getting it right and doing it over and over again is like one of the most challenging pieces of marketing. Mm -hmm. Period. Right. Any business, any person is constantly thinking about this, especially as you evolve, your business evolves, you have new products, services, not alone very normal. And if it's not a top concern from you, then you're probably doing something wrong. Right. Right. Um, so things that we can do is look, use the research, use the data we have available. So for instance, on any of the platforms, there are insights. Are you looking at the insights? For instance, my Instagram insights tells me my audience, like 75% women. Right. I can't see that same split with the LinkedIn data. But I can see on LinkedIn that I have a very heavy audience of uh, founders, marketers, right? I can look and see job titles. Right. I can see where they're located. I can see what companies they work for. Um, and each platform provides insights. Then you take a look at your email list. What's going on in your email list? You could do a quick survey to right. your email list. To your current clients, you could do phone calls, quality. Hey, can I ask you 10 questions? Can you help me? You could do a poll on LinkedIn. You could do polls on Twitter, uh, right. on Facebook. So when people say, I don't know how to do it, I'm like, you got to get scrappy because yeah. big companies will do big qualitative and quantitative research. Yeah. Go out to hundreds of people and um, get good data on their audience. But for small businesses, solopreneurs, these are the things that you can do. Right. Right. Um, and just really be social listening. And what I mean by that is don't just get out there, post and be gone off of yeah. the that you're on. Um, go pay attention with your posts. What are people liking and not liking? Right. They saying, go look at your competitors. What are they putting out there? How is the response? You know, look at the hot trending topics. Why is this a trending topic? Can I, can I get into this? Is this something relevant to me? On Google, I mean, there's tons of different resources. Uh, for instance, there's a site, site called Answer the Public. I don't know. Yeah, if you've no, one. I haven't. Um, but just like from an SEO standpoint, right? You could see, hey, what are the big topics happening around personal branding? Mm -hmm. Get a pulse through SEO. Right. Um, what, are, what are the keywords and topics that are happening? And so this will start to help you understand what people are saying around your expertise and where you can tap in. And more, more, most importantly, test and learn, test and learn, keep going. You know, we have evolved and understood our audience. It's and since I've been, it's every time. We're learning new with our new program. We just launched our stand on authority experience. Um, it's as we get more information, as we talk to more people, we keep saying, okay, this is more for that solopreneur. It's more for that business owner. It's not going to be so much for the person working at a company, right. you know, that working professional. And we just learn yeah. and we have all the messaging and that's what you do. I think, you know, if we're especially startup companies are like, you know, I hear people say, oh, well, I don't have enough of time. You know, it's all it's, you know, they either have like one or two people on their staff or there are limited amount of people on their staff because that's all they can afford right now. But yet, you know, they, they need to branch out. And, you know, sometimes I guess you have to spend money to make 
make money and people have to understand that too, to a certain degree. Yes. <laughs> I mean, a hundred percent. And there's all the things that I just mentioned are free. It's free for you to put out polls. It's free for you to do the research on a, on a site, like answer the public. It's free for you to take time and do social listening and, you know, look at how, like all of those pieces are free in terms of dollars. They just take time, but right. you don't really have a choice because if you're not getting engagement and you're not getting conversion and you're spending all the time on creating content and emails and nothing's working, what other choice do you have? Exactly. But to really think about my, right. My audience is off. The message is off. There's, there's a few levers we pull as mar marketers price is off what what's off here and right. so that's what you have to do you have to do um you know if we want to not just grow but sustain exactly exactly and I like the comment that you made before is that retention is so important because I think so many times people you know they they're looking to get new traffic they're looking to get new followers they're looking you know but it's you know people can come on but they're only going to stay on for a few seconds you know or they might see you know something an article that you know grabs their attention or a picture that grabs their attention but they may never never come back but those people who have the retention and are focusing on your material is because they're interested. And eventually you will hook them if you do the right things, don't you think? Yes. Um, the It takes at least seven to 10 touch points for your brand to make any sort of impression on somebody. Right. So just think about that. Like if you think oh, well, I sent an email. Oh, well, I sent a message and I sent, I did a post. I tried wrong. Right. Exactly. You need to send many emails. You need to send many messages. You need to show up every day on social media. You, all of it, like and over and over and over and over mm -hmm. and over again. That's just the name of the game. Yes. And it's particularly hard right now with the mass amount of content produced. Attention spans are incredibly low. Right. So not only do you have to produce a lot of quality content consistently, mm -hmm. you, know, you have to do that. Um, you really need to make sure that your audience is on point and you're, you know, you're learning you, you have to do the whole thing. Yeah. Test, learn and, and keep, keep going. And honestly, you really just need to keep, keep at it. I know that's what we're doing. Yeah. You know, I, I've even experienced it in my own and even from, from other business owners that I know that you, you have to really uh, at least give yourself an hour each day to focus on your customers and your brand in and to get out your cold emails or your warm emails or your follow-up emails and really spend time focusing on, on your business. And like you said, I think, you know, it could take a long time before you actually get that person to actually grasp your attention and want to maybe go to the next step with you. You know, I, I feel like yes. it's, I mean, if you're doing organic, especially organic marketing is a much slower pace than paid. Yeah. You know, for bigger purchase decisions, they could take six months to a year. Right. Think about that. Yeah. And I'm not talking about buying a pair of shoes because I'm talking about a bigger business kind of purchase. Yeah. Um, is a, a buying a pair of shoes is needed and emotional and it's a consumer kind of decision, consumer to consumer. Right. But I were on a business podcast and most of the time people are selling a product or service, right? And it's not necessarily a pair of shoes. So the buying cycle is much longer yeah. than that you can expect. And most people, by the time I actually talk to you, have already made their decision. Exactly. About because they've been watching you, they've been researching and all of that. So um, it's just really, you know, bring the conversation full circle, right? It's how the, it all starts with that brand. It all mm -hmm. starts with the, who I am, who do I serve? Why, why do I care about this? Um, you know, and then how do you actually go to market with that message and do so in a way that's consistent, mm -hmm. that's targeted, right? Yeah. Uh, and that feels really authentic. 
Uh, you know, our society is going more towards reels and videos, short videos. Do you think it's 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 a good idea for people who are branded to spend and invest some time into making videos and to making reels and actually seeing that compassion and that and that voice and that interaction with their listeners? Yes, I think that if you're going to put yourself out there in some social way and you're doing that to draw in an audience and and potentially sell or convert, then yes, I think that you have to be integrating video into your marketing plan period, whether that's on a website page in an email or on social media. Um, now, does it have to be a reel? You know, reel is referred specifically to Instagram. Um, I personally, ha- I don't, I put Instagram content out there. Um, mm-hmm. I, I don't see conversions from that. It doesn't, the energy to reward for me currently is not there. Right. Um, but I have, but on LinkedIn, uh, videos are finally starting to really get in the algorithm more. It has been behind on that. Um, and so I am producing at one video a week in, a, in addition to my other content formats. So I think that, you know, for any person, you, you really need to think about what is going to be the best right. format for you and which platform and how you want to go about it. I don't think that it has to be Instagram reels or TikTok videos. Right. Um, there's a lot of different formats and ways in which you can do video. And it also doesn't mean it has to be done every day. So just being really smart on what, am, what is the message I'm trying to get out there to who and on yeah. which platform. I think that's a great, great advice. Now, if you had to give like a couple of pointers before we go, what tips would you have for for business owners who are trying to rebrand themselves or trying to brand themselves in general? I mean, I just gave a 30 minutes of them, but I know I but um, like the most important, like, you know, yeah, you know I mean, said. I think if it wasn't clear enough, you must have a presence on LinkedIn and it's uh, still crazy to me how often I talk to people and they're like, oh, I don't, oh, I have a profile. I haven't been on that for years or I don't really do that. Oh, I need to get on there. And I'm just yeah. like, this is such a big miss for you because LinkedIn is growing the fastest is not just a social media platform. The capabilities are uh, way more than people ever, ever yes. actually know. It's owned by Microsoft. Um, so you must be on LinkedIn. You must have a page, a, a profile page that has all of the pieces of that, um, of building your personal brand. If you're a company, you must have a company page also right. on LinkedIn and really spend some time investing, you know, spend time investing in LinkedIn and what is uh, what is capable for your business. I think that's great. Now, where can people find you? Because you also do speaking events and you also have your business where you help people brand themselves. Where can they find you? Yeah, well, of course, um, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, The Rachel B. Lee is my handle across Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, The Rachel B. Lee. Um, And I absolutely love getting LinkedIn messages, you know, personalized messages, you know, mm-hmm. saying I heard you with Stacy, and I really loved learning X, Y, Z. That's a perfect way to start a conversation with somebody. Um, and then of course, standoutauthority.com is our website. We have tons of information about our services on there, our training. Um, I also have media pages, uh, cause you mentioned speaking. So yes, I speak. And if, if you're interested in in that, whether it's podcast or anything, you know, definitely go to standoutauthority.com and that's going to be the best way to get in contact with us. That's awesome. You know, I, I want to thank you so much for coming on this show. You provided us with such great information. And this is something that people really needed to be well-educated on because I think people, especially if they don't have someone doing their marketing for them, um, they're totally lost. They don't understand the true concept of brand- branding. And you've made it very clear today. So I want to thank you so much for coming on the show and providing these great tips and, and great advice to us. So thank you so much. Amazing. Thanks so much for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. You have a great day. Thank you.